Tonight, chaos mounting in flood-ravaged Brazil. Whereas swollen rivers rise yet again, police patrol submerge streets desperate to stop looters. And the country's Olympic hopefuls leave qualifying tournaments early, giving up on lifelong dreams to return home and help victims. Brazilian officials say close to 150 people have died and roughly 130 are still missing in the widespread floods, which come after a similar round of flooding hit the area late last year, with more than half a million people displaced. Many, like Maria, are asking the same question. Is it time to flee the natural disasters hitting their homes? And in her words, do you buy another house somewhere else? An intensifying climate means more hurricanes, more floods, more wildfires. Unlike in uh, generations past, there's more people and there's more people who are in harm's way. It's called climate migration. And for decades, experts like Professor Pablo Bose at the University of Vermont have been warning it will become a massive and massively destabilizing global phenomenon. Now, amid the worsening floods, tornadoes and wildfires of our man-made climate crisis, these warnings are coming to fruition with the U.N. predicting climate fears will force 216 million people across six continents to move within their countries by 2050. This is also something that affects us much, much closer to home. In the U.S., one study estimates that in the past two decades, 3.2 million Americans have already moved from areas known for flooding, like parts of Florida and Texas. Climate change is equal opportunity. It hits all sorts of places and it hits all sorts of people. It's not equal opportunity in terms of who feels the effects the most. It's overwhelmingly marginalized communities, indigenous populations. Among the daunting questions officials face what this trend will mean more broadly. The White House warning in a 2021 report mass climate migration could induce political instability and pose risks to food and water security. Experts pleading with officials to focus not only on the impacts, but also to zero in on root causes of this man-made crisis that more and more is truly hitting home. There's bigger policy and cultural shifts that we have to do to really deal with the, the root causes of climate change, because what this is, is really dealing with the effects of it, not the causes. Maggie Vespa is joining us now. So, Maggie, when you talk about these latest migration numbers here with Brazil being yeah. really an example of this, what's happening there, talk about what the rest of the world can do to help, because obviously that is a call that often goes out at times of disasters like this. Definitely. And in this case, if this is kind of like a test case that we're talking about, the response that we're seeing is kind of what we've seen in the past in situations like this. Case in point, President Biden putting out a statement over the weekend saying that his administration is in touch with their Brazilian partners to provide what they call necessary assistance to the Brazilian people. But it's important to remember that, you know, today, OK, we're talking about Brazil, but you heard from that scientist in our piece and the scientific community is in complete agreement on this, that climate changes, leaving no corner of the world untouched, and climate migration will be the same. They believe it will be a completely global phenomenon, unless, like you heard in that piece, Hallie, the root causes of climate change, and we talk about this a lot, are addressed as soon as possible, meaning pretty much now. Hallie. Maggie Vespa, thank you very much, Maggie. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.